Greetings, it's the 18th of June and welcome to Essex UK. So today I'm going to be making a video and the video today is going to be why growing broad beans, otherwise known as fava beans or fava beans, in containers rocks. So I've got a variety here, Aquadulcia claudia. This is a long pod variety. This is a good variety for overwintering. You can see they've made a good size. So I initially planted them on the 5th of January and germinated them inside, brought them out to the polytunnel a few weeks later and then later planted them out here on the 5th of March in these containers. So you can see they're doing very well and they are carrying a very nice crop. So you can see the lovely, beautiful pods there, really full, look at those, really nice, nice big pods, and there will be some lovely beans inside of these. So you can see just how much of a crop these plants are carrying. I have four plants here, and each one of them is producing absolutely beautifully. So I have some Aquadulcia claudia broad beans growing here. Same initial planting dates, same planting out dates as the ones you saw in the pot. So we are carrying a good crop here, but the bean pods, they're not as full. Of course, if I leave them a little bit longer, they'll probably get fuller, but um, I've noticed that when I grew the ones in the pots, I had less trouble with black fly. These have got plenty of black fly on them. Ants, of course, farm them, etc. You need to deal with the ants. But um, one benefit I found of growing broad beans in containers and pots, I don't know why, whatever reason, I seem to have less trouble with black fly. So whilst we're on the subject of black fly, one of the ways I deal with them is I squirt them off using this hose lock jetter like this. And also, when you see them, crush them up as well, because ants actually farm black fly. They'll protect them. And you need to make sure that uh, you kill the black fly, because if an ant finds one, it can then lift it back. They actually carry them about, which is quite, uh, quite caring of them. So there we are. So don't know why I have found less problem with black fly growing them in containers, but um, I've certainly spent more time doing this squirting the black fly off on the ones in the ground than I have these and uh, yet less black fly. So if any of you know why, comment down below please. So you can see these are significantly bigger than the broad beans I've got growing in the ground. So these are about five foot tall, about 155 centimetres, whereas the ones in the ground are about 75 centimetres tall, which is about 30 inches. So there we are, so significantly bigger. Now it's not a totally fair comparison because I've been giving these a lot of water because I've been growing in the pots and I've also wanted to see how big I could get them, whereas the ones in the ground, I've let them fend for themselves a little bit more. But uh, as an observation, you can see these have made a really nice height and these are not a dwarf variety. As many dwarf varieties you could grow as well. The Sutton is one, and remember I've grown before, but so this variety, Aquadulcia claudia, long pod variety, hardy variety, hardy down to about minus 10 degrees C, 14 degrees Fahrenheit, no problem at all growing these in containers. By growing your broad beans in containers and pots, you can control the growing medium. So broad beans like a pH of about six to seven and a half. So let's say your garden allotment soil pH is lower than that, more on the acidic side, maybe four and a half to five and a half, which would be ideal for growing something like blueberries, but not so good for something like broad beans, you can control the growing medium within your containers. So you can make some of your own compost, you could buy some compost, something like Westland vegetable compost I've found is very good for growing vegetables in containers. You can also put some potting grid in there to make it nice and well draining. Broad beans do not like growing in a growing medium that is too much on the waterlogged side. They don't appreciate sitting in waterlogged soil or growing medium. So you can really control that growing medium in there, and make it nice and fertile, nice and well draining, and uh, they will appreciate that. So that's another benefit of growing broad beans in containers and pots. So broad beans like a minimum of six hours full sunshine per day, which is probably about what they get here actually. And you can see they've made a really good size here. Ideally, full sunshine all day. So let's say, for example, you actually plant them in a place where they don't get that either accidentally or you're not aware of the rule or guidance or whatever. So what you can do is if they're in a container or a pot, you could of course move them to somewhere where they do get more sunshine. So growing them in containers also a good thing if you rent a property, something like that. You may not be allowed to grow in the open ground there. You might not be there for very long, so you might want to be able to move them, take them with you to your next address. Maybe you live in an area where you've got an outside space, but uh, it's a concrete garden, if you will, you know, concrete on the ground or slabs. There is no open ground. Of course, you can still grow them in containers there and get this lovely benefit of broad beans that way. Great to control watering as well. I've been giving these this full watering can between the four of them. 
every day. So that's about six, seven liters, one and a half gallons, something like that. So you can make sure that uh, the plant gets all the water you're giving them because there's nothing else growing you know, in the surrounding area. Try and keep the weeds down in the pot. Watering nice and controlled, make sure they get the water you're giving them. If you really want to go at the next step of uh, water conservation within the container, you could even put something like wood chip like that, you know, fully around the plant to keep the moisture in. You could also use something like straw maybe as well. Easy to tie up. So you can see I've got a bamboo cane here and some string wrapped around the plant like that. I've got a bamboo cane in each pot and then the string just goes around holding the plants in together. You could also have the cane situated so that the plants can almost lean on them and then tie them on with string or twine or something so they don't blow over, fall over, etc. That's one good advantage of growing them in containers and pots. And another advantage is, let's say one has got mobility problems, the beans, you know, they're up a little bit higher because of the, or some of them are, because of the pots giving them a foot or so lift, 30 centimetres, something like that. So. You could also even take it to the next level and grow these on a platform. Of course, you'd have, probably have to get someone to get the pots up there for you, but I think you get the idea. Could make gardening a little bit more accessible for those with maybe something like back pain, joint pain, etc. Mobility issues. So they will, of course, appreciate a nice deep pot. So you could see these here. So these are 30 litre pots, nice and deep for them to put their roots in. And you can see the plants have really made a nice size. And we're going to pick these now. You can see some of the beans inside and we'll just see a lovely crop we uh, get off these. Five good sized beans in this pod. So uh, still actually producing beans here. If I left these longer, probably get an even bigger crop. You know, I could pick the ones down there and leave these on there. I need to pick these all today really, or, you know, because I need to get, I need these pots, etc. this space for other projects, but uh, certainly very prolific here. So here you go, there's my yield there. So absolutely wonderful and very happy with that. I really enjoy taking these out of the pods and uh, putting the pods in the compost bin. So there we are. Now, observation, as one would expect here, the plants at the back, there's two at the back in the pots at the back and two at the front. The plants at the front yielded a bigger crop. But one would expect that because they're getting a lot more sunshine at the front here. And of course, more sunshine equals more crop. So the ones at the back weren't getting as much sunshine, so less crop as one would expect. So next time, I'd probably end up having them, you know, in a line or in a place where they were getting sun, you know, all day. Of course, got the fence here and the plants at the front, and you can't do everything, and we make the best of the situation we're in for our gardening. So there we are. Anyway, that's why growing broad beans in containers and pots rocks. I think it's a great idea, certainly works. Let me know what you think about it. Of course, if you're living in a more exposed location, you might want to consider a dwarf variety I mentioned earlier on, the Sutton. There's plenty of varieties to have a look about out there. So there we are. And um, yeah, please feel free to subscribe, like the video if you like it, share it with anyone you think may find it interesting and or useful. And um, enjoy growing broad beans in containers and pots. See you next time.